at seven o'clock. Okay, um, everybody's here, uh, seven o'clock, so we'll start the meeting and uh, welcome everybody. You call the roll, please. Kurt Jacoby. Irving Ranger. Present. Dave Jenks. Here. Fred Glander. Present. Daniel Lee. Here. Jim Martin. Here. Trisha Taylor. We don't need to make a motion to move ultimately. Okay. Um, so, any visitors who would like to make a presentation, address the well, I would like is a big question. But yeah. I shall. That's what okay. I, so I, I gave you all a copy of the public health date in Montgomery County. That's nothing to do with, with what you're doing, but basically, um, the Montgomery County has decided they're going to inspect every septic system in the county. And, the, and then you have to get a permit for that system. And if it doesn't pass, and you have to either replace or repair that system. So really, it's a very poorly kept secret because they didn't let anybody know. But they have a representative is going to come to the trustee meeting this Monday. I, I called them up. So if you know anybody that's concerned about this, which should be the entire township, they haven't come to the meeting and asked them it's going to be early on in the meeting, so we'll hope yeah, if, if he has a presentation, then we can ask him questions. Just glancing over this, it says by 2030. Yeah. So they're not so going to be out here next week. Well, they're going to send us, they're sending out letters this, this month. So I, I don't know which portions of the township they're starting out as or with. So that would be a good question to ask when, where you're starting out. Are these just in unincorporated areas? Uh, I get the impression the entire Montgomery County. So even if you have a city where you have a couple residents with the septic system, because of Germantown has a couple residents with septic systems sure. that are hooked up this to the uh, sanitary sewer. Right. So yeah. So I just thought that was interesting. So you can keep that copy. But again, are they contacting any, everybody? Uh, they eventually will. Or just the people that they're starting with. I'm, I'm assuming they're they're going to contact the people they're starting with. Do it in waves because again, when you're talking about the entire county, how many households are we talking? Right, so is that obligation of ours to tell people that this is going to happen? Uh -huh. Well, that's that. I was talking to Shauna. If we knew somebody from the Dayton Daily News, have them show up Monday. This <laughs> the, so it's because right. I, I don't think anybody else knows. Right. Yeah, it's like they, right. they sent they people to not blind when they want to get the letter. When they get the letter, yeah. So exactly. So that's that's a good question. He's coming because you asked. He's coming because I asked. Yeah. So I, I get the impression this may be the first one. We put something on our website and Facebook pages as well. To let people I know. think, yeah, if you could, yeah. I mean, just, you know, just to let them know. Stay I don't know if this is a clue to it. I mean, you'd read this, if you can answer my question. So the second paragraph says that there, these operation permits have been issued by Montgomery County, as we know. And it says these permits are issued in compliance with blah, 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 or the ORC. And as those operating periods expire, so I imagine that means when you've been given an operation permit that it has an expiration date on it. So it says, as those operating periods expire, residents of Montgomery County with these systems will now begin to receive their renewal notices starting in July 2023. So I don't, you know, my house is almost 40 years old. I've never received it. Anybody else received it? We have an operating, we don't have a You know, for my, it's a new house, so I got an operating permit, I'm sure, somewhere. In there. I've never had to, no, no one's ever come to my door and said, hey, you need to do this. So when they're 42 years old, I've never had one. Yeah, so that, these are all questions we need to ask. How, what does an operating permit look like? Yeah, what does it look like? What does it involve? Who's going to, you know, and then the other question, who's going to do, do, do these assessments? One, one thing we can be sure of it involves money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they need to be yeah. up front with the expense of it. Also. And, the, you know, they, the repairs have to be done by someone who's, Third, the yeah, sewage treatment contract is registered in Cameron County. The open door. So there's all kind of questions here. So I thought I would bring this to you guys and you know get, get the message out. And like I said, if anybody wants to show up and for the meeting, I purchased my house two years ago with the septic system. And if, as a realtor, it should have been disclosed that there was issues like it wasn't permitted in my disclosure. So we have to inspect them. I mean, some of this, I don't think they do. Well, that, and that's the other question. But you know, you've seen like I've seen a couple of those mound systems, and I really don't even know how they work. So these big three mounds. Do they pump the sewage up and then it goes through these mounds? Or I mean, this is questions we can hopefully ask this guy. 
but if it has to be replaced. I, the rumor was that Montgomery County is trying to get rid of gravity type systems, the old type systems like you, everybody pretty much has. You got the, the you know, the, the subway tank and the leach field. How busy, what are you going to replace them with? Are they going to last as long? So. So yeah. <laughs> so, the only, no, I remember seeing the one on 725 and going to my neighbor that new house that sits close to the, to the road. It didn't sell for a while. And just oh, put yeah. a brand new one in on ship. Just did they? Have, yeah, right behind the old Shaver house. We'll sell the sewage and it's on ship. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was smelling the sewage at my house on ship and wondering where it was coming. Spray it out. The air. So, anyway, that's something to think about. So, I'm not sure that would be good. Well, I have a friend of Batavia, and they, I don't know if this wasn't permitted, but they came and made him put replace his uh, septic system. It was about $20,000. The same can be cheap. Yeah. Yeah, you can't get you know, excavators to hardly do anything, and there's not enough people doing that kind of stuff yeah. right now. You know, I mean, and yet you really want to bring. Yeah, that how do you check if it's working or not? I mean, my joke was, if it's green over your leach field, right. it's working. Yeah, if it's not green. It's not working. What, what's the what's the parameter here? So anyway, so getting back to the subject at hand, uh, basically the the trustees had a special meeting last Thursday to. Uh, Discuss a resolution to enact a moratorium on small solar facilities in German Township, Montgomery County. So I made a little presentation before that uh, meet or during that meeting. So I want to go ahead and read that. You probably have this and you may have read it before, but I'll go ahead and again because it hopefully will clarify a couple of things. To begin my presentation, I will refer to Article 8, a agricultural district preamble in the German Township zoning resolution. This district has been established to provide for, ag for agricultural activity. And related uses is it and is intended to protect and preserve areas of prime agricultural soils for continued agriculturally agriculture and agriculturally related issues. With some background, solar facilities in Ohio are grouped into two broad categories: large-scale solar facilities, 50 megawatt or larger, again, one megawatt equals one million watts, and small-scale solar facilities less than 50 megawatts. So again, and, and Kurt and Tricia know this answer to the question, how many acres does it take to put a, enough solar panels to produce a megawatt? Six or seven. Six to seven. Six to seven. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you were you three. Yeah, so it only takes six or seven acres to put enough enough panels to produce a million megawatts. And so doing that math further, I figured that if, when we do the 50 megawatt, megawatt one, it's going to take 300 acres. Right? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So. And I, the question was asked, how did, how did the, the developers decide how much, how many megawatts a, a project is going to produce? And basically what I found out, solar, solar developers define the size of a solar farm in terms of the, the capacity, how much energy the entire farm can produce at one time. So that's what they come up with, 50, 49, whatever. So any solar project in Ohio, 50 megawatts or higher, must go through regulations determined by the Ohio Power Siting Board, OPSB. These regulations are quite extensive, as is the application process. And I always pull this up. This is the application process for the OS, OS Ohio Power Siting Board, for large scale, not small scale. Um, uh, quite extensive and involve multiple public meetings and meetings by the OPSB before any project can be approved and construction commenced. As an example of the scope of a large scale solar project on June 15th, 2023, just last month, the Ohio Power Siding Board approved the construction of a 300 megawatt solar powered electrical generating facility in Clinton County that involved 2,460 acres. Remember when you th talk about the setbacks from the road and stuff, it actually involved 4,000 acres, which is a pretty big lot of acreage. Prior to October 11, 2021, with the passage of Senate Bill 52, Ohio count, 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 counties and townships had no authority to regulate solar facilities as they were considered a public utility. Senate Bill 52, again, effective 10 11 2021, just a couple of years ago, gives county commissioners the powers to designate restricted areas where large solar and wind facilities cannot locate. So you're just talking about large solar and prohibit construction or limit scope of specific projects outside of the restricted areas. That information is included in ORC 303.58. House Bill 501 gives zone townships expressed authority to regulate solar projects under 50 megawatts. As of April 6, 2023, so only three months ago, 
townships may regulate small solar facilities, and this information is contained in ORC 519.213. So compared to the extensive extensive regulations involved in citing large sale scholar, large sale scale solar projects, a small scale facility only requires the approval from the zoning department to receive a zoning permit. This is especially a problem if no regulations are currently in place like ours. As a result of this, our townships are going to see many more small scale facilities being proposed. Because the large scale has to go through so many regulations. And there is, uh, I talked, I sent an email to a lady that, that took or was running the webinar a couple weeks ago. She said that they're kind of seeing that the more small scale projects are being introduced versus large scale. So according to OSU webinar on 53023, if townships wish to regulate small solar projects, townships need question whether existing regulations address current situations. Township have a rule for distinguishing the type of systems and treat them accordingly. Townships should determine zoning districts that require permitted or conditional use designation for small scale projects. Some concerns with solar project in agricultural areas include losing prime ag soils, as well as concerns with grading and compaction with soils, drainage problems, weeds, loss of pollinated habitats. So I asked the, the moderator a question by email that she answered. In your opinion, should townships place separate regulations regarding resi residential solar projects from larger projects in order to preserve prime agricultural soils? And her answer was, Protecting prime soils is a legitimate use of the zoning authority townships now have. If maintaining agriculture is a priority for a township, it makes good sense to protect the soils that best support the agricultural production occurring in the township and include restrictions against siting some or too much of siting solar on much or too much of those soils. So some uh, some of the questions we were talking about that night. Do trustees tonight pass a six-month moratorium on small-scale solar facilities in German Township? except for single family home structures while the zoning commission crafts regulations with the six months moratorium do most landowners want the trustees to craft a permanent moratorium on small scale facilities except for single family structures so in the resolution which you probably read we, we made out an exemption for single family uh, structures so we basically we're not trying to slow down if someone wants to put solar panels on their roof for a small array in the backyard there is the moratorium doesn't affect that so the moratorium will last until December 29th, six months. So, uh, so there is certainly a possibility that after once or as it gets close to the that uh, moratorium ending, the possibility that the moratorium or possibly of making the moratorium permanent could be addressed by the trustees. Possibly having, and then, and then we, there was some discussion about the large scale uh, solar facilities. And the question is, do the trustees approach the uh, Montgomery County commissioners to block, basically restrict those out of German Township? That's certainly something that I will try to work on. I don't know what the what the what the, the county commissioners would require before we try to do something. We would have to have a meeting with with discussing that regulation, just we like to, like we did with this. So the the, the thing is. Um, I, th I think by law, the trustees could put a moratorium in place. But if I pass you guys, it would take the choice away from homeowners. But I, you know, I got the impression, you can maybe decide, the people that were here really don't want solar, certainly large-scale solar, and I don't think they really want small-scale solar. They already had signs going up, and they were concerned about the Weaver and Manning Yeah, road. exactly. And that, and that's, a fella had already sent out letters, but no proof that he so the, yeah, that's the again. And there was a trustee from Jefferson Township and a trustee from Jackson Township here. So they kind of got all copies of that. Jackson Township at their next trustee meeting is doing the same thing. I believe they're doing. Yeah. So uh, part for a, kind of a working definition, you said opposed to small scale solars, but all solar facilities. But already people have them, you know, in their backyards and houses. Oh, yeah. So, so what's the differentiate? Because both of them are small scale by definition here. Both of them are small scale. Anything under 50 megawatts is right. small scale. So, so the differentiation, and this is what um, the lady again from the webinar said, the way to differentiate those residential ones are where the, the uh, energy is, is produced on site and is used on site. 
the larger scale ones is where the, the energy is produced on site but shipped off, you know, to the grid. So that's how you can differ, differentiate there. Is, is I ask her, is there some, you know, level of megawattage, is it 10, 5, 10? She said, it really isn't, but you can, you can differentiate, differentiate those by where it's pretty, it's all produced on site, obviously, but if it's used on site or, or shipped out over to the, to the grid. That's how you can make that difference. Yeah, so. You have a so. number for average home solar like yours? I don't. How much it produces? Mine is, I think, 38 kilowatts. So I, I, and I, I've got, well, I think it's it's just kind of like the large scale. It's the maximum it can produce if it's, if it, you know, if it's, if it's sunny that day. And so I have, I, I'm assuming, I don't know this for sure, because I have 38 panels, so does each panel produce one kilowatt, maybe? Good assumption. That's <laughs> just, just, yeah. So, yeah, so but it's much, much smaller, I could say, than, than a, you know, a small sales facility on 40 acres or whatever. So then you're talking megawatts. But again, the difference is if it's used on site. And there was some discussion uh, by one of the residents last Thursday. He was worried that if we put this in place, he's not going to be able to put a, a solar array on the three of us. I said no, because it's used, it's generated on site. The excess electricity goes back to AES, but it comes back as a credit on your bill. It doesn't go and get sold anywhere. So you just you, know, you say you'll get a credit on your next bill if you produce more energy than you use. I just talked to my neighbor tonight, and she said, um, "There's the one that's just put one in on the corner." And Oxford and solar shining, right? And um, she said their bill was eighteen dollars last month, but it's not working out like they thought because Butler Rule, which is what we are out there, um, because they're a cooperative, they, they don't, don't the have credit. to pay the uh, yeah, going, they don't have to give them credit, right? The going yeah. rate. And I think you know, so yeah. they're not. It's not working out as well as they thought it was going to. Yeah, they should have probably shifted. How much they pay? Much that cost them to put that panel in there? I think it was uh, in twenty five and thirty grand on ROI. Pardon me, yeah, yeah. ROI at one hundred dollars a month savings. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. yeah so, very long. My friend up in Columbus figured he had twenty years if he put it on his roof. So there's no way you could justify it. It's not our, <laughs> not our call, but. Anyway. Or you're facing clean energy, which is in the yeah. state. So anyway, so the, the all my trip. husband said his like on ours is a panel, it's a 400 watt panel. 23 panels. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how that <laughs> I'm not an engineer. So, so you know the the monitors always follow the money. Have you been able to hear, has anybody mentioned what's driving this? I mean, is it a Department it, of Energy type of? Uh, well, because you get that tax credit now. It was the original, originally the tax credit was 30%. So 30% of your project, they are, say your project costs $30,000. So you could take off $9,000 off your, off your taxes. So it wasn't a deduction, it's a credit. So it just takes it right off. That's so that, I'm sure. Go ahead. Oh, so that that was decreasing incrementally, and then with the, the last, you know, that's the infrastructure bill. They put that back up to thirty percent. So, so that's 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 probably the only thing. That, the biggest thing that's driving, I think, is probably what the company is saying. You can get a thirty percent tax credit. However, if you finance it, finance it, you don't get that. You have to, have, you know, because I think that the company takes that. It's so that. you're saying the thirty percent goes then to, to like I say, personally. Is that person, person who lives at the property? If, if that person pays for it, you know, out of pocket. Yeah, but the ones we're talking about, at least what we've heard, we're going to be leased system. That okay? um, they're not paying out of pocket for the installation. Well, you um, for the home systems. Basically, you're you're financing them, so you're not you're not really leasing. I I don't know the specific issue that we we're up against right now, which sounds like it's the small solar farms right. that found, and they're being leased. Yeah, they're leasing the land. The company who's installing them, they're leasing the land, so they own them. <laughs> the property owner does not own them. They're just letting the company lease. Yeah, they're leasing, they're leasing the land so they can put the, the panels up, and then they're paying the property owner so much. So who's getting that 30% you're talking about? I think the company gets that. 
So that's not to individuals. I'm sure there are probably yeah, yeah. individual credits for residential systems as well. This 30 percent we're talking about is is going to the companies who are coming. Yeah. Uh, and I'm basing that on a couple of assumptions. One, we know that the people who are getting the at least sounds like more red, the people who are have the properties that are leasing the property to the company. They're getting paid so much per month or whatever it is per year for right. having that for having those on the property. So that doesn't sound like then they're also getting some additional benefit. No, I think it's just yeah, they're just getting you know yeah, and then the the the, the 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 you know they're they're offering big money. So how much do you get cash rent in the range? Three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's anywhere from probably two to three hundred dollars cash yeah. rent. On so these are in this you know they'll they'll pay the owner. Thousand dollars per year. You're never going to make that from or more. Or more. Yeah. 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 They leave you after. Yeah, I haven't heard of any that are actually buying them again, but yeah, so. So. It just, I'm suspicious that the, there's probably some kind of federal program. Well, yeah, I'm sure there is federal money coming into it, yeah. and, you know, trying to get the, the solar. So, so yeah, so, and I think some of it's just like any other company to get investors, you know, investors to invest in this project, probably most of the big ones, not so much the small ones. And, and so you can get this much out of your investment, you know, this percentage of the, of the investment. So, yeah, so that, that, like I say, I think that at least the impression, I like, guess, going, going back, the impression I got that I don't think the, Residents of German Township want certainly don't want large facilities, you know, thousands and acres. And I'm getting the impression they really don't want the small ones too. And it was a good argument for that in some of the documentation, like from Chad Gilbert, about why yeah, Chad, case, exactly. it's not just. I mean, I'm, I'm looking through the template provided um, for uh, possible wording. Okay, of course, I was right, interested yeah. in the wording that we might be coming up with uh, looking through that, and and that's not. Um, it, it, of course, it's for the broad issue. But it doesn't bring up anything about the actual agricultural impact on. No, it doesn't. You know, I'm just saying that's why if, if this and I mean, certainly our BZA really is striving to maintain agricultural, prime agricultural soil. And that's that's their primary. Any any case that comes in front of them, that's their primary decision. Now, and we've mentioned that a number of times when we've had issues uh, from the gravel bits to other right, things yeah. about the uh, the Montgomery Montgomery County Planning Commission. How we ever designated as you know we cited this so many times but you know i've never i, I don't know if i've actually seen that document that says that this area was designated as an agricultural district um, is that, is that well somewhere you're, you're talking about the web survey of the source of prime agricultural soils well not no that could be another aspect of it but i'm talking about all along i mean this has been for years we've heard that the montgomery county planning commission has designated i think it was used back when they were fighting the landfills back in the early 90s that this area was designated as an agricultural area. Well, I think, I mean, it's, it's, when I think yeah, that goes again back to the agricultural soil survey, which is now on. So, yeah, so they can say, you know, the, these acres, these acres are prime agricultural soil. And that's what the BCA will base their decisions on. So if they're just deciding, well, it's in the ag district, that doesn't necessarily mean it could be terrible soil. And I've played around with that web flow survey, and it tells you a lot. Doesn't it? It, there isn't much in our area that's not prime farmland. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did. I live in the middle of New Lebanon, and I did my house, and it's prime farm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's what laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Back when they did to, it, just don't want to know. It's easy for me to type in and, and map out any parcel, and it tells me exactly what soils are on there. And I have a list of all the prime ones. And like I said, there's not much yeah. in our area, if any, really. So I put my garden there. <laughs> you got that one spot. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Rebecca has like good stuff. We, got, we just had some salad. This <laughs> it's good. How many parcels do we have in the township that's big enough that we could even do a small scale? Mm -hmm. See, it looks like that one was 2460 and it's still took another 48. Do we have the parcels? I, I can't think of any large enough that would. I, th I think what happens is, I mean, the small scale will be 30, but I mean, the large scale where it's going to be 300 plus, and you're going to have to have the road front, you're going to have like 400 acres to even do a large scale. 
do we have any parcel? I mean, like what, what happens is, is, you know, like one farmer might cave and then the neighbor's like, oh, I want in on this. And, you know, it just keeps adding to the acre. Yeah, some of these, even the projects we talked way, way back last year, the two project in, in projects in, in Preble County, I don't know if those are still going forward or not, or go out there. Well, a community but, member brought that up, exactly, about the, that night on the 29th. About what you just said. Yeah, you'll get these patchworks. Of, is what it, you think so is going to be one continuous big area, but you get these patchworks where this farm is in, this farm is in, this farm. Yeah. So it looks like. So does that count farm. as one big one, it or is yeah, it individual? It's all, it's all going yeah. into the you know the. So how are they? Yeah. Because it sounded think, like they were kind of. Eating. As long as the ground is contiguous, yeah. and then yeah. as it touches at one point, yeah. you know, and they can run their wire. From they one can keep area. going on or on. So, after the farm behind mine, like 250 acres, that's like one of the bigger parcels. I don't know if it's full and continuous. Like, where's that? Right behind my house on Shen and Shadows. Oh, yeah, because that's 242 acres. Mm -hmm. Because I know of a flat piece. That would still be probably considered a small, yeah, you know, small scale. And I brought up the case the city of Dayton just recently rezoned 60 acres in northwest Dayton. So they could put a, uh, a, a small scale solar farm there. And I think the whole project is maybe 280. However, the output is 49.9 megawatts. So they get underneath the Ohio power siding board. They say the Ohio power siding board, no one wants to do that because it, it, they actually have to have a public meeting before they even considering anything. So, to, to, you know, so the public's gonna know what's going on. These small scale ones, it's like, well, like again, the Jefferson Township one that we've been in. And, and uh, the House Bill was 501 and, oh, and, uh, and Senate Bill 53. Those gave a tremendous amount of authority to the county. Exactly, because there was nothing. It, it, they say no. I mean, in theory, I think they can block off the whole county, let's say. Theor yeah, theoretically they could. And the, then the Ohio Siding Board has nothing to work with. Exactly. So that, that, that is the question is, I know I... I get the impression is that that we would want to go through to the county commissioners and see, hey, maybe get together with Jackson Jefferson, whoever wants to, to join in. Is, is that about the time you start passing petitions? That would be the time you start passing petitions. I think that would be the best weapon to you know to use, not a, not necessarily a weapon, but the best avenue to do that is to get petitions to from all the landowners, especially the the landowners that, that farm the community, you know, farm the land. Get that so we could present that to the county commissions and say, hey, we, you know, we've got 300 people here that don't want any large scale, you know, and that would be an easy way to do it. I think it might be even an easier way, I don't say easier, but I think at least more impressive would be to, we already know uh, from the attachment here we had that uh, Chad Gilbert, he has uh, acres in this right. uh, township. So if we can, and we, I'm sure we also, besides him, we could find out other people who have the largest. Uh, yeah, I get those people and we say we have out of our X number of acres in our township, uh, whatever percentage of that is owned by those people. We already know don't want it. I mean, instead of making a petition, we could go to like five people probably and get over 50% of the farmland yeah, because you know, in the township to say that, oh, you know, well, over 50%. So those are the methods of doing Luckily, I don't think there's any good wish as far as that goes. You know, so. Well, the, the, the sooner the better, right? because yeah. the, it's like we did before you were. Um, I think you even trustee or, or maybe you want to be ZA then about the uh, the uh, signs, the advertising signs that were that went up down there at Sunsbury before we were able to write in uh, right. that said that you can't have these. The same thing there, they were leased. You know, there were, there were these signs that are there at least for 99 years for these big billboards. And uh, and at that point, it wasn't it wasn't uh, ruled out. So there there are you, know, you say that that's all through the trustees that you know. Question is what what do you guys want to do? Do you if, if you if you go ahead with the impression that we're going to put a permanent moratorium on the small scale solar, then you really don't need to do anything. But it's a fallback, and this is again just my opinion. Put the right put some regulations in place. Easiest way to do it to have some sort of buffer would be to have um, uh, like the agriculture the solar facilities in, in ag district. Out, uh, as our conditional use. So, in that case, if somebody came to Sean and said, I want to do this, she's going to say, okay, you're going to have to go before the BCA to have a hearing, and they're going to have to approve this. And again, on private agricultural soil, I don't think there's any way. But you have to prove, even at 
we we just I discussed this with the uh, the attorney. It asked them that the state property owner needs to get a use variance. Most variances are area variances. Like you don't have enough frontage. They want to build a house. They don't have enough frontage on the property. <laughs> Something you know, you know, or they want to put their garage in the side yard because the backyard's you know slopes down. So those those are but but you could make them uh, get a use variance, which basically says I want to change the use of this property. To prove that, they have to say they have to prove that there's no other use of that property. So in this case. They can grow crops in that property, so they, you know, there's no way. But I mean, that that's one. It's kind of a, a, a difficult way to do it because even I talked to my Miami Township, and they said they don't even use use variants. It's basically the other way is to make that person change the zoning to be able to do what they want. I would think if we agree on this, that we would want to do the zoning resolution as well. I mean, from what Shauna you said before, and what I've heard in our joint meetings with the BZA. It seems to be a consensus that it'd be nice to have something written down. There needs to so come to you. You don't have to say. We don't have well, anything on the I mean, there, there sure right needs now. to be something as far as, you know, just home, you know, roof yeah, rooftop. Yeah, we have nothing. Because we have nothing. Right now, we treat it because basically we say there's no no zoning permit required. Because you're really not changing the structure. You're just adding solar panels to your. It's just like putting on a new set of you know, shingles. So, and we treat the 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 panels in the back. The, the, the ground mount, the small ground mount panels is just an accessory use. You have to be in the backyard and six feet away from the, the property lines. So it would be nice to have something in there. Yeah. That's and that's yeah, that's what we when I when I met with Kurt and Tricia that, that explains what Miami Township is doing and some of the other towns. This is this is Miami Township one. It says here from that Ohio Township Association. No, that's it's just their, their sample template. It's the Township to work in Ohio. Yeah. It's the one. The, the goal provide guidance for the Zoning Commission. This is the five page one. This is the one I used with Kurt and Patricia. So, so oh, I, it's I super think, detailed, but you could like cross out and just yeah, yeah it gives you a lot to work with. Yeah, and that's so that's uh, a lot of that's, well, that is a template. Okay, and, then, and that was kind of funny because. Is Miami Township has one too, you're saying? Yeah, uh, within the that's, that's it. It's that's attempted from that's not, this is Ohio Township. Different thing. It's the one that says goal, provide guidance to the zoning commission. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't seen that until so the, the, the funny thing about Miami Township, I called again, I called their office and they said that that uh roof mounted solar panels are zoning exempt, which mm -hmm. means not to do anything. However, when they go back in your their zoning resolution, there's all kinds of different things that they're. they're right, they have like. Have have, you know. <laughs> so if it's zoning exempt, why have all these regulations? Right. It is not zoning exempt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, this thing. The goal. You said the goal. This is Mark, goal. Provide. This is Mark. Okay. Yeah. If you look on. Um, I spoke with Alex Carlson, Miami Township Director. Yeah, that's that's the one, yeah. Okay. And so then the, these, the, the parts below there are from Miami Township. Okay. So I would avoid, you know, may I, and again, you, you guys make the decision, but I'm just trying to give it a little guy. If for sure, we need something on the, the roof mounted solar, you know, residential solar panels, something on the, we don't necessarily, we just have to say that, you know, ground mounted solar panels associated with a residence or an accessory use. You don't really have to get, because we don't list every accessory use in the zoning resolution. It could be a chicken coop, it could be a garage, it could be a work, you know, anything. Well, I guess I, I mean, that would certainly work for the meantime. If it's a, you're saying we wouldn't need, especially if, if the moratorium lasts a year? Yeah, well, you, what do you mean? I mean, it sounds like you were saying. Well, if we, if, we, if we extend the moratorium, well, we, I, I think it's it's a matter of if if there's you know if you guys need time to put some regulations in place and get the whole thing through, then we could we could extend that to year. My question is, do we extend it permanently? And I think we have that that right as far as the, the, the new law. But it also sound like you were saying we don't need to, to develop these things because it's just say ground. Well, if we yeah, you know, if we extend the moratorium, we we. Theoretically, would would basically go over your heads, <laughs> which is which yeah. we're serving trustees yeah. anyway. So that's yeah. But that's for large and small solar. 
Small what would that do? What would that do for the average homeowner? So the average homeowner would be just like what we've written already in, in the resolution. They would be exempt. So it wouldn't apply to again uh, residential systems that are on the roof or in the in, you know a ground small ground made that are, are produce the energy there and use it there. It does not go off site. That's that's the big differentiation that we're basically using. It's produced there and then goes off site. To some, you know, AES or whatever, that would be considered different than just a residential. And we've already got that exemption on in there. Right. Yeah, so used on site, used off site, or yeah. yeah. So that's 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 already in there. We, we put that in Technically, there. doesn't yours go out to the grid? Technically, but it doesn't. I I don't get a check from Bay Harbor Energy that they they bought. You know. Three, make, three you know, kilowatts. I, it just goes back on your bill, so it right. doesn't affect anybody. Yeah, theoretically, it goes out to whatever, but it gets. Yeah, you know, I can say that. So if you're producing over what you're using, somebody else is using some somebody else electric. is using. So you're it. actually helping out the grid. So okay. when everybody goes electric on their vehicles, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> we're all charging uh, our pickup truck. Yeah. And then just talk, but you're talking about the other kind of thing, you know. In that case, your main promise needs to get a battery. So you can store the extra energy or use it. But you're very expensive also. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. But so, so anyway. So yeah, that's that's the questions. I I I can't I haven't gone to you know our, our legal counsel and say, you know, can we actually put this in long term? Put the in long term and she may say it's an improvement. But, you know. What's, you know, what's the legality behind that? And I don't know. I, I get the impression that's what the community wants. But again, you're taking that choice. Say somebody has 50 acres, getting 250 acres of, uh, of cash rent out of the year, or offered 1,500 acres to put up a you know solar, a small solar farm. But if the goal is to preserve prime agricultural land, which basically it you know, says that in the resolution. And it's kind of a no-brainer. It's what we're going to do. That was also what occurred to me as I was saying a little while ago about this template. It doesn't mention anything about that. And I, I think well, that's stronger, especially in our district, um, the stronger argument might be to go ahead and put something in the resolution about about no forget about the solar. I mean that will not forget we could say e.g. solar and, and whatever else, but um to say that that no agricultural lands will be um uh, depleted other status as prime agricultural soil. Yeah. And then that way it, it's going to whatever else because someone else might want to come in and put you know, yeah. acres of parking yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 It would be the same issues, it sounds yeah. like as far as yeah. it would go to one of those includes that can include wind turbines too. Yeah. So which, which we kind of probably could have done that with the small one, but it wasn't really didn't seem that but I, th I think though that that would be should be if we put it in there that maybe that should be the emphasis about the uh, the prime agricultural sort we have all the like you said we have the data there and we have uh the, the i'm sure we have a, a good ally in all the the major farmers in this area oh, yeah you just look up the look up the property on you know on the auditor site and you get go to the maps there's also the land records where you go to there and shows exactly where the property is how many acres whatever and then shauna can go to the um, land bank and she's and not exactly what's on that land because they did the whole. I guess they did all, the entire Ohio way back when. Checked all the soil, so yeah. So I, you can, I think that's what you can always fall back on is protecting ag, ag soils. I don't know. You say one, we, we need something certainly residential. You when when you look through that template from the OTA, it's like so detailed. Mm. Doesn't you know, and it doesn't really you know. Address making you know, the, protecting the primary agricultural soils. They said they're really well. So, which is our you know, major thing. Yeah, exactly. That would be the the whole. Any document would start with you know the goal of German Township is to preserve better primary agricultural soils for agricultural use. I mean, you guys are the landowners. What do you think? Get the numbers. <laughs> yeah, because if, if we if we yeah, more that. <laughs> so I, I, you know, and I think that I'll, I'll try to, you know, 
basically get a, a hold of our legal representative of New Sharm and say this is how the meeting went last week. But was discussed what's you know is what's the legality behind extending that moratorium term. Could you also check another angle? Because I was thinking also another way uh, other than just saying for where it's prohibited. Uh, I think maybe we could and again it would take it would take an inquiry into the legal aspect of this, but to see to say that that no uh, solar farms or wind turbines if we want to do that too can be uh, can be uh, implemented or set up with if they're not owned by the property owner. In other words, no leasing. Uh, effectively rule out any leasing. I don't know. You, you're getting into a whole other legal. Well, thing. that's I know. That's why I'm saying to talk to the, to the legal um, I, I could. people. Could you just ask if if we can out phone out any any leased uh, equipment on and what happens when they go to the landowner sale or we're going to buy your land? Well, I mean, yeah, we, exactly. we'd have to do both ways. I'm yeah, sure, but but I'm saying that would keep. Yeah, but you, and and then you, I think it was Mark that said in his presentation, or somebody was saying, why aren't these people, uh, why aren't these companies buying the property? There's a reason why. Yeah. So if if it's not. It's obviously not profitable for them to do that based on uh, what it costs for the property. Uh, to do it, Ross, they'd be doing it. Um, well, they know that in 20 years that it's dead. Going to have to yeah. take commission. Yeah. So, yeah, they, so they yeah. want to they want to be able to walk away and not have ties. Well, and, the large ones, though, it, in in Senate Bill 52, it, it does that whole decommissioning process was was uh, was put into that bill, and they have to they have to have a bond for the the amount of money that it's going to cost to decommission. And that is revisited every five years. Yeah. So. So that that's the large scale. That doesn't mean anything about the small scale. So much we need to put something like that in the small scale so that in twenty years. If we, allow, we don't allow them, doesn't make yeah. it ideally, yeah. yeah. Ideally. Yeah. Well, and, and as far as that seminar, she said it's up to the landowner when they sign that They make sure that it's in that contract that they're signing that it will be, you know, this will be returned to the OS before, which is pretty much impossible. So yeah. Not. Yeah, they're going to they're going to grade it. They're going to try to smooth it out. They're going to come back to the soil. It's never going to be as profitable, like, as productive as as, as the land is before they went in. There's no way to determine we're old time. Yeah, and that's another thing that that, that uh, was was brought up. So if somebody has somebody puts a solar solar farm on their property of forty acres, you got drainage running through it. Something happens. There's a blockage in that drainage. They gotta move solar panels to get to it, or yeah, yeah, yeah it's a whole thing. Yeah, the name brought up. It. It's, yeah. Big, you know, back over. Yeah. So it's kind of easy. So Elbow grease. You don't know where it's going. Yeah. It's a big, big job. And that's an excellent tile. Goes from one farm to another. You know, to right. another. Even yeah. something you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Tile yeah. that runs from farm. You know. It would go across another farm mm -hmm. because don't you have to provide that drainage? Yeah, you have to have. You know, you can't. You can't. They just don't get kind of stop at my property. No, no, no. drainage you won't allow to continue the land. Yeah, so that's another reason not to. It'd be so complicated. So, yeah. So yeah, the, the, uh, <laughs> so getting back, you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll check. Uh, you know, if if we can make that long term, or even something renewable, say five years, and then we revisit in five years, and you know, but the the resolution itself, if you read it, it says it it can be amended, so it's not set in stone that this is going to last for six months and then it's over. We can the trustees can amend that at any time. On December twenty eighth, we could have another resolution and pass it that we're going to extend this for another six months, or as long as we want. That's your conundrum. What do we? What, are, what is our best bet at this point? If do we move forward trying to put together a small solar farm template, or do we wait to see if these want to go forward and possibly extend the moratorium? Well, we'll, we'll we got a, a meeting Monday, so I'll bring that up as far as you know what what do the trustees want to do. You know, you know I can say Lou, Lou, and and Jake were all forward for getting this moratorium in place. Long term, so I don't think it, I don't think and that too many residents would be sad if we put the moratorium in place long term. It's on the Valley View website for Facebook, so 
Yeah. People were all over that. <laughs> against it. <laughs> against every minute. All the time. So yeah. Just like the upper positive. Any, any that were. Um, well, but, um, no, they wanted. There was uh, people questioning. You know, uh, you have more details about the residential um, use. Uh, so they were asking for that, uh, but it, a lot of them were like, keep solar farms out of this area at all costs. But the amount of money they are offering landowners, though, it's almost inevitable. So they're fearful, also. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and now yeah. knowing that Jackson Township is moving in the same way, mm -hmm. but they're doing it for a year. I mean, if we could use them as Allen, I think that works in our favor as well. Yeah. So don't live in the township, but wish you the best efforts. These things are such eyesores. Funny thing is that they think about green energy, but the push would be to have solar on the roofs, the homes and yeah. businesses to reach zero energy and not have ruining and the that, land. The yeah. really one option is to, again to restrict solar uh, panels to certain districts. You could restrict them to the industrial district, which we have hardly any. You know, for them. Okay, you can just I guess that you could restrict them to certain districts would be one way of doing it. So you can you can do it, make it a conditional use in the agriculture district, but then you run the risk of ten years down the line you've got a new a new BZA or most mostly new members and they want it somewhere. So they could say, hey, you that conditional use, we'll approve it. So that's that's a concern with that too. I think in our township, as I recall, we had that issue though with the gravel pit about trying to change the zoning to an industrial. I mean that's one of the areas I think all of our I'm not mistaken, all of our industrial areas are contiguous to agricultural districts. So you still have the issue of what you're doing to to um, you know possible runoff like uh like where I saw that all the, the law says you your 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 uh, runoff your drainage, yeah, your, yes. you're allowed to drain down in your neighbors. <laughs> so it could be the same issue. I don't know that industrial limiting to industrial. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. You know, if you had a lot of big industrial areas, like up near the airport, where you got these huge yeah. warehouses, right. you know, that would be great to get put solar panels on those huge warehouses and make a lot of energy. Here, we don't have enough, you know, industrial mm -hmm. as far as industrial districts that would make any side of it. No, I, I agree. I don't think that would probably be the best way. Like I say, I'm, I'm hesitant to to make it a conditional use. Just yeah. know yeah, well, what's going. Those are all options. The, the, the OTA thing seems, you know, from what I read, it seems more putting, putting restrictions on as far as setbacks and fences and foliage. And whatever. <laughs> but I don't think that's that's really our major concern. We want that at all. You take it away, you know, you do take that choice away from someone. But I mean, I the that five one nine point two one three. I mean. Definitely gives us the, the authority to do this. If we want to stop the construction, that's what one part of it. You know, whole thing is that we township trustees have control over that three months ago. How long will that last? I mean, that bill that has allowed us as of April to govern this. Well, any bill I'm sure can be changed. That's the thing. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's why you do the do the homework locally and then, you know, if it's in place, I don't, again, you're, you're talking about legality of it, so I don't, I, I'm assuming that, well, I'm going to get changed. You don't know, I mean, you can't make a judgment on some, what if, you know, so the bottom line is, it's great that we have, you know, I hate to be philosophical, but it's great we have the energy, but if you don't have the food to feed the people, make any difference. <laughs> It seems to be great. So there are plenty of places you could probably and Hamilton just is, is considering a I can't remember how many different facility, but it's on undeveloped land undeveloped land. I can't remember really what they said was undeveloped, whether it's a floodplain or something like that. I think if there's any undevelopable land. Is that the word? Well we get floodplains. Pardon, we certainly have blood points. Solar array on especially since some of those are in agricultural districts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
I think that if, if you find whatever you want to do, if, it, if it's going to come up again, if you want to change the zoning resolution, you know what that process is, which is a long process. You make the resolution, send it off to the planning commission, then you come back, have your public meeting. Then that goes back to the trustees. You know, so that's so, so if you find out that you, know, you want to do something, you can have time to do it. We can certainly trustees can look at setting that moratorium. And just like Jackson Township is going to do anything. way, it's nice to have a deadline to make your really. Well, it is. Longer, it? It? I would love to. I'd love it for be a, a year, yeah. <laughs> six months. <laughs> it does put a little pressure on it. Do something. So we should do something anyway. Just make it a year. We'll do something. Well, I think we definitely need. I mean, we obviously need to to put something in the resolution about small solar as far as individual residential. Yeah. yeah. But and make... Mark said it could be. At the end, you don't have to put it in the middle, right? It was, it was something that he added on. Oh, an addendum at the very end. Right. Yeah. 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 At the that's end, so it makes it easier. Have, then all you have to do is update the table of contents. Yeah. So you don't have to so take several sections. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said to do. Yeah. Over to you, gentlemen. Ladies. <laughs> I will say the couple things in the broad picture that are driving this are cost, and this was in one of the videos, I think video number one, that OTA or the Ohio State, yeah, whatever, the Ohio State extension, uh, that the cost of solar panels has dropped, you know, it's 18% now, the technology from what it was 15 years ago. So that makes the production of electric that much more efficient, productive, productive, yeah. So you got that, plus nobody's building power plants. You know? I mean, it's almost impossible to build power plants right now these days. So I, I think the state and, and utilities want to build the capacity out, but they're kind of boxed in. So they'd like to see some of this, you know? But because you got EVs, you got EVs coming, and that's going to add a, a certain percentage to the um, to the load. Yeah, they're already bumping their heads in California and Texas. <laughs> there you have. Are we voting on something, or just do you no, need I, your um, confirmation of just, our? I guess we're asking to Mark's what Mark is presented here. In my opinion, and I'm and I'm nothing. I'm just you know, don't mean, but um, it just seems like I mean, like I said, obviously we move forward with the residential solar. Uh, um, but I mean, if you really think that the trustees are going to go for this, if, if we can possibly look into the permanent, the same happened in our township. I hate to sit here and waste everybody's time putting together a small solar template and then like oh, well, yeah. throw it out the door. We did that. We, we did that with cell towers. Yeah, exactly. And now it means nothing. <laughs> and it was like, it was just like that. You did a bunch of work, and then yeah, yeah and we have no, was, we have no jurisdiction over cell towers. Oh, okay. So it's in our resolution, but it means nothing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 and Mark, gonna bring up wedding venues too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> turn the next tour. <laughs> I mean, I think it's definitely something that's inevitable. We have such a job to protect the, the prime agriculture land. Yeah. And we're, we're here to protect our, our town. I mean, if, if we do any kind of conditional use or anything like that, our current BZA is not going to, they're, they're not going to allow anything through. If it's on prime farmland, it's not going to happen. So it's, that would almost be a waste of time, too, because we'll put in these regulations where, oh, you got to go through the BZA, and BZA is going to be like, nope. Well, then it's a whole bunch of work for everybody in meetings that don't even need to be had because I can tell them right up front, it ain't going to happen. Mark's point just a little bit ago was that over time, those members of the BZA will yeah, and, and they easily could become, you know, come in favor of yeah. promoting, promoting, not just approving, but a promoting um, electric solar. I agree. Solar I agree. Yeah. So I say take it out of the hands of the BZA completely and just fix it. We ever That's had just my opinion. opinion. In the past, I guess one of the fears I think of is if you set our line rules 
these these companies have a lot of money the cost of litigation, litigation. I, I get it it's, it seems from? like from from the, the the ORC that we're pretty much covered time to say you can't do this because it's right in the law and it's a law so that's what i thought was you know they, yeah, they I, drag you into like oh dude how much is the litigation going to cost to keep this out versus making things like yeah because you they'd uh, have to it wouldn't be us they'd have to sue the state which they can't do here let's see well as of right now there's so many other places that are letting them come in we don't care we got nothing we're not i mean we're we're being super proactive compared to everybody around yeah. us I mean, we, me and them, we search resolutions and, and nobody's got anything about nobody's solar. Got Nobody really even has much about like, small solar panels that, you know, residentially. There's, there's nothing. I have a plug here so they can get the review. Yeah, I mean, and as of a week ago, I was talking to Kristen at Jackson Township and she was freaking out trying to put together something because her zoning commission and her trustees weren't doing anything. So I said, well, I'll, I'll let you know. The board is having a meeting, you know, a special meeting. I called her back Sunday or Monday, I think, and um, she said, "Yeah, my trustees are doing the same thing." So yeah, I think it just took like like one township, and now maybe it'll. They were here though. It'll right? spread, yeah, yeah, and that's why because yeah. my daughter was here. Yeah, but you know, it's almost like someone's got to get it started. Well, that's why we had the special meeting. I didn't really, you know, we could have waited till the ten or till Monday, but it's like, well. As soon as we, the sooner we can do this, I think it's better. So you never know. So. Yeah. Thursday, the hint was from Jackson and Jefferson. It's not from Dura Township. Oh, yeah. Easily. It's almost like nobody knew how to get started with it. Yeah. And and honestly, the only the only reason I did is I saw an article on paper about Miami Township and Green County had put it in the mm -hmm. So I hadn't read anything else about it. I appreciate your heads up. Thank you. Uh, You're providing good leadership. I really appreciate it. No, I'm, I'm serious. You, you are. You're, you got your antennas up. Was there a proposed uh, siding or um, small farm proposed on Weaver and um, Manning? Yeah, was that on Jackson Township? That's or Jackson was that Township. Township. Yeah, that's that's a little it's barely in the Jefferson Township. Is that one approved and going in, or was it proposed? Oh, was uh, Weaver Road. The way I had heard, the way Blue said that Chad Gilbert reached out to him was that. Or Lucy Gilbert reached out was that they were gotten letters they had already started happening. Yeah, they went to be surveying out there. Man. I mean, Lucy said that she was getting three to four. It was asked, is that the peck, the old peck four part? people wanting to leave yeah. that land? Uh, Roscoe. Uh, tell them they to put a brand new letters, but there was yeah, no proof. They got like a permit to do it. Uh, yeah, so they haven't gotten permits. Yes. Yeah. That's why that's yeah. Northwest Columbia yeah. Manning. Yeah. 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 So there is signs. I saw actually a sign across from Phoenix. That very property there. Right? I've seen a bunch of them just on my drive to and from work. So. A lot of them right by Donna Mill. Yeah. 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 yeah that awesome. same. But that fellow was here and he offered the signs. Yeah. And he had so one of them. Yeah. Well, um, I guess we're, we're I think it with sense. the visitor portion of it. If you want to continue with the rest of me, I, yeah. I mean, keep my promise to end the no later than eight three on any meeting. And the goal is always to you know end the day, but you can't do that. So um, move things along. Is that is that okay, Mark? It's your meeting. Okay. Well, I just I didn't know if you had anything else to add. No, but, okay. I just All right. question. Thank you. The question is important. What's what's your feeling? Okay. Do you think that we should go for it? Yeah, that's the impression. We didn't really have that many German township people. I think there was only 21 people total when I tried to look at them. Well, and, and it, it happened so quick, and I think a lot of people didn't have a clue what the meeting yeah. was about. Yeah. I mean, we put it out there, but yeah. nobody knew what, yeah. what was going on and what was happening. Right. So, so if, you know, if we have another a meeting as far as when we talk about the large uh, large scale, I'm proposing that to the city commission as well. If you want on the Facebook pages and the mailings to let people know, hey, to be discussed. I think, though, I think a lot of the attendance of that came from Lucy. She sent out a text. Yeah, to, right, yeah. all, or a lot of, I don't know how many. Well, Lucy, I think the one that kind of got this whole thing started. Just, I think she emailed Lou. And then Luke came to my office last week. Lots of 
I think you'll have the strongest show to the commissioners if you get most of the townships together versus going individually to the speed. Yeah, I think that would be. Yeah, I don't I know how much easier or hard that is to get neighborhood yeah, yeah, like, together. Yeah, it really does, you know, it's, I mean, you're going to have to do it separately and say the Jackson County. It's going to have to be separate for resolutions. And just, you know. That would be my biggest um, wish for all this if we're not going to have to do anything right now that you can get the you get the year moratorium, but to get that, it sounds like from my understanding, we need to have something that's sent to the commission saying that we want to have this area free of that. Isn't that correct? Yeah, you have to make a resolution. It's a resolution that they want all of German Township to be you know, to be a restricted area as far as large solar farms and large. So can that be? How soon can that be done? Or what do you think? I mean, I know you have to vote on that. Whether you want to do it, you have to discuss that with the trustees. But do you do you think that could be done relatively soon in um, the next months? Yeah, next several months, I'm sure. Yeah, because yeah. I, I would to me that would be one of the most important. Um, as much of a large scale because all the steps they got to go through, and, the, the, and that's strictly you're talking about strictly that's strictly asking for input on how we feel about large scale. Right. If they don't want to hear about. How we focus yes. small scale. The, the commissioners only control large scale. So then chips control small scale. Yeah. So they, the county commissioners don't have anything to do with the small scale. So they don't want to hear our feelings on small scale either, right? Yeah. By the way, <laughs> yeah. So if we want to restrict on small scale, it's just up to you guys to pass it over. Yeah, pretty much. Let's see. Yeah, but. You say the large scale is so complex with the you know, siding. I think that that's uh, the one that the one again, the big one in Green County. They're, they're, they're contesting wild water. That got turned down by the Ohio Power Siding Board, and that's going and if it gets turned down by them, it goes directly to the Supreme Court. So that's where that one is. Is that the one in Troutwood? No. Cross from Kilcar. Green Town. Like that, right? That makes sense. That's right. There, actually, smaller than Several townships in Green County who actually chose to restrict those. That was after the twelve hundred dollar, twelve hundred acre one was proposed. So yeah, so we're we're kind of in a holding pattern, and we'll, we'll discuss. Um, I think that then Monday we'll basically discuss if if we want to go to the county commissioners, how to go about that, and then if we want to think about making that more toward the you know, response. But yeah, you know, I guess the nice thing we got six months as far as this one says. So that's that's the big big thing. That's what we did to get that in. Do you think it would do any good before you plunge into a moratorium flat out to run it past the attorney up there at the OTA who we listened to the video, all the videos on, plus maybe a new Sharma? That's not a new specialty, but you know the ramifications of it. Well, I, I actually did reach out to. Uh, or Hall, and then she never got back to me. So I don't know if she taking off or no. Yes, maybe. No. So she never got back to me. So I, I can maybe reach out to her again. It's, 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 I, that's exactly what I said is, is placing a moratorium one avenue to go to control fees. She never got back. So I don't know if she thought it was just some jerk that didn't want to see. <laughs> so I didn't talk because I didn't tell her that I was signed up for that webinar because I had sent her some other stuff. We go through the OTA to get to her because she's a He's a counselor, right? Yeah, we can go. I, mean, I can go straight to. Oh, okay, can you? Yes. She gives up. Great. Hey, how do you feel about this? You're probably one of the largest landowners in the in the township. I don't want to see it. Here you go. Good. I think I can talk because I've turned down a number of things already. That's the thing, like Chad was saying, he gets four or five letters from Chad or Lucy, but they're all different companies. So, so everybody's trying to make their, you know, make their buck, I guess. But characterizing it's bad. 
Okay, so plus, I guess our recommendation then would be for the trustees to pursue a, a, a moratorium while we work in the background for the, the district, the districts, the residential, the business, the industrial. Yeah, I, I, that's really up to you if you want to limit it to certain districts. I don't know if that's that important again because we have such little, such little small industrial districts, and most of those are kind of around Weidel's, aren't they? Yeah, and I think Stubbs property is actually is an industrial. Industrial, yeah. So, yeah. so I don't know if prohibiting to prohibiting them to certain districts. I don't know if that's that's really it. Prohibiting them. So let's say if we had the large warehouses, where would you just prohibit them to be, you know, work for the large warehouses, but we don't have that. That's, that's an avenue for it too. That's something you can think about, like I say, but you can you can also think about the conditional uses. You can always change those too. Again, at this point, the BZA is not gonna approve solar farms in the Sacrifice that. That, right. may so that may be good if we don't put the moratorium or, or can't put the moratorium in place long term. That may be the, the, the simplest ways to to allow. I wouldn't ever put it as a permitted use because then they wouldn't have to do anything. But as a conditional use, so that way you have the extra layer of the BZA deciding these cases. So, kind of a backup plan. Kind of a backup plan, exactly. Again, the moratorium doesn't affect the small residential, right? So it would be nice to put something. So, Absolutely. so when they call up and say, "Do I need a permit to put solar panels on my roof?" Say no. According to such and such in the zoning resolution, no zoning is required. Exactly. Uh, do you want anything from us? Any kind of endorsement, or you're just this is just information? You just you don't want us to give you a motion to uh, say go with the more the moratorium and no, pursue I'm, that route? Or, yeah. Okay. It's, All right. We'll just sit that tight then. I mean, almost a conflict of interest because I'm telling you and then you're telling me back. <laughs> and, and I'm just <laughs> sorry, yeah, so. We, need to, yeah, we can. We, when, I'll I'll bring it up that you know I, I discussed the issue at the last zoning commission meeting. And all, uh, they were all in agreement that we should. Sorry, I'm probably for a long time. Well, I, I think and I hope that we uh, that looking at these characters up here and knowing them all good here that we're not we're not really puppets. <laughs> we're, we're not very good puppets. <laughs> we're, we're very poor puppets. <laughs> more the other other way. Is that true, Becca? <laughs> hey, no one's controlling us. <laughs> so that that's that's the game plan. We'll, we'll do at least some discussion about a day. You know, you can decide. Again, you, you probably should put something as far as residential. We'll let you handle the big ones. <laughs> okay. Any other visitor comments? Okay, we'll proceed with me. Thank you, Mark, very much for the information, all your hard work and leadership has been very obviously it's just kind of worked out. So so good luck to all the fun people next week. Yeah. Okay. Um sorry, it's gonna be the top of the pair. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you yeah, Everybody absolutely wants to about the seventy five day. Go out there. Is this coming? Is this coming? Clock, and they say it'll be pretty early. And yeah, I'd like to find what's going on there, especially when it involves that many entire town, entire county. I can't. I can't even fathom the scope. The inspect. Just imagine how many inspectors they. Can. How many they have to systems can they do in a day? And I mean, one of the. The lid, dig up the you know dig up the lid on your septic tank. Some of those are buried. <laughs> Some of the old ones. The time inspection was when I bought the two years ago. It came out. So yeah, you did. <laughs> it's about what it was like. I paid him and he went on with his way. Right. Right? So, and he wasn't climbing in there and checking how did you know. <laughs> he dug the hole up and opened it. 
it's much more to say that, you know, when you can't pick your leach field, I mean. He checked the depth of that was basically what he did. He wanted to see how much was in there. And then he said, you need to have some. I don't know if you've got any instructions. Make the poops, Billy, the end. Back it up. Make sure I put that in the meeting. The green stripes, I think. Yes. The <laughs> That's what it was like. And we got rain, they eh? our yards evened up. See, you know, <laughs> it's more than yeah, I was like, yeah, I knew it was gonna get a good one. That's right. Okay, old business folks. <laughs> well, I can relate because I'm thinking of my own property. We have, we have the meeting minutes of uh, April 4th. It's our last regular meeting. And we also have the meeting minutes of uh, May 30th. And uh, Shauna, print those out and put those in front of us here. I believe I sent these to you. I usually oh, you, you print them. No, I yeah, and I, I I usually send those out right after I do them. So I think I sent them out to you guys months ago, right after they were finished too. So they got a chance to go over them. Okay. Um, so if you want, if you can read through that, um, I think I didn't see any problems when I read through or a little earlier for the meeting, but uh, I, I don't know how to spell. A new Sharma's last name, but I would guess it's S A H A R. It's not S C. Is it it S C? Okay. That's the German way. So uh and Trisha T R Y C I A. T R I C I A. Biggie, though, I've never corrected. She were doing names. I'm fine. Trish. I know. Yeah. I know. Trick. Thanks for thanks for being this call. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, any comments on uh, the April fourth, second quarter meeting minutes? Any, any mistakes or corrections? Too many people. No, no, we gave you a lot to eat them now. <laughs> Set it out, I swear. That break in the action is really taking off. So thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Good. Good luck. Good to see you, everybody. It was a news name. Um, April 4th, it was this was a paragraph on the second page. It's, it's uh, a paragraph. Oh, is, We have any more questions? Any more questions about the campground? Why? Yeah, we'll put it in. Nope. Uh, did they sell that? I wasn't sure if that was part of the sale or not. We're waiting for campground. Wiles. Yeah. I'm trying to pressure this campground. I'm going to suggest we table that until we tackle the solar, just because of the urgency. I think, I think they sold it. To say, I know Wiles sold gravel. But I'm not sure if they sold that for too, but 
actually sold that whole pit there and that. I'm not sure what all they sold. But they were behind the auto house. I, don't know, I just know that there's a new company name if you go past the smart right in there. Yeah. White will sold out, you're saying. Yeah. For sure. I can't say for sure. I just know there's a different name. If you go past there, there's a three letter name. S SRM. SRM. They're out of Tennessee. Wow. I don't know what they sold when they didn't, but there's definitely an SRM to the name of the company that's now running the stuff down on Chip Street. They're the same ones that bought it. They did. Actually, no, they're there. For me. Actually, know the guy that you're buying all of it. Any other comments? Oh, did pay for port? Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to? So <laughs> what did you say? Ready, ready to go. <laughs> and Keith, did you second? <laughs> all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's look over May 30th. That's a shorter minute. <laughs> Got the most amount. <laughs> Any corrections or changes? Patricia, you say you spell your name. It's not correct on here. Well, when you spell Trisha, it's T R I C I A. But I people call me Trish, which is T R I S H, I know. Yeah. I'm not Patricia. You go by. What do you want to go by? Yeah. There, there's so many things I could go by. Either one is fine. Patricia or Trish. Most of the time it's Mrs. Taylor. Right? Oh. Yeah, for the 185 seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um any changes? Okay. Do so I hear a motion to approve the so moved? Second. <laughs> I'll say. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um is there any other old business that we know of? I think we, yeah, outside of the table, everything. I agree. Table all this over right here. Motion to table the campground issue for the time being. I don't even know if it's an issue anymore. Yeah, because yeah, he said this. But we had it under old business, so we can shelve it, I guess. So we don't. So otherwise it keeps coming out the whole bit. They never really applied. Uh, okay. It was just kind of brought to the yeah. So it's really not a thing. I don't think we need to do anything with it, really. Yeah. Just let it go disappear. And that's the new okay. people want to put a campground in. <laughs> I don't see that happening. So unless somebody applies for a campground, we, we uh, I mean it might be something that we want to put. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Not just specific. At least put a definition. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. There's I just, the, regulations yeah, are, looking up. Yeah. But right now, I think the solar thing's got more urgency. So put that, since nobody's asking about it. Yeah. But eventually, somebody might. Yeah. And I'll add it to the list of many things that are on my list to, that we need to discuss. And that was another thing. You found only one township for what? Yeah. You, yeah nobody you, had nobody had anything for campgrounds. Yeah. Really found very, very little. So, okay, so we need to move to have a motion to table that. Did you guys? I don't know, honestly. It's no longer an issue. Okay, um, no other old business, so let's move to new business. Uh, that was primarily the subject of. Uh, Solar panels and Mark covered that. Um, so basically, uh, you know, sounds like we need to wait until they find out what they can do on the, the larger scale for uh, farms that are small solar facilities to get the definition right of 49, 
49.9 down to whatever, you know, in the backyard of somebody's property. So, so we've got uh, districts, zoning districts that we probably define there, residential. And, you know, should it be in the backyard? How much of the backyard? How much of the roof should it take up if it's a, you know, roof panel? So those kind of things we need to talk about. So, um, figure out how many lots can be created by the amount of space we want this to be made and then just make a rule that can't produce more than X amount of kilowatts and then all the problem of space and you know, like still put them in their backyard, but we have that regulated by it's got to be six feet of the line. We have all that. So if we just came up with how many kilowatts you were allowed to create produced within the township, pretty much it's state less Well, and if you if you look in the solar template that you gave us from the OTA, we can use some of that, I think, mm -hmm. for it has it has general requirements for, for rooftop and ground mounted if we yes. wanted to just work with that. Yeah. And it, it goes with height restrictions, um, no more than percentage of so percentage of a structure's walls and or roof if applicable. Yeah. I think I think that they've created an incredible template for us to go with. We want to do something like that. They're very easy. Yeah. We can just spot there's this we, yeah, exactly. Right we do about those very <laughs> <laughs> they provide, provide them for our use. They've done a good job. I mean I think it's basically we would be working with the homeowner type <laughs> systems. <laughs> Whenever I called my neighbor. Today in a, he he was in Florida, but I did talk to his wife. And he's supposed to call me because I wanted to get mics. And I actually want to measure and see how much space is because this is a freestanding. So I actually wanted to get measurements on that to see what because I, I imagine that's probably a typical whatever backyard solar freestanding system, and I wanted to get the height and so forth so, and how much his is supposed to maximum output and so forth. So he's supposed to call me. So I can have that kind of information, something to look at when we yeah at our uh, next meeting. A, a note on that, and I, I think somebody might have touched on this, but they, these panels, you know, they've got a when they're brand new, they've got a certain rating, but that degrades about three to five percent a year. Oh, it does that. Yeah. So after 20 to 25 years, you've only got 20, at the most, maybe 25% capacity left producing. And so it's just sitting there, not doing a whole lot for you. Probably in the winter, nothing. But if anything that's out in the weather, that's what this guy on one of the videos, uh, he's with Ohio State Extension. He said, yeah, anything that's in the weather, you know, it's gonna get degraded over time. Have warranties with the company because I mean, we have them on our barn. We have, right now we have 23 panels. We could only put seven more panels on on the barn. Um, they've made them streamlined so that they they were so thick, and now they you know over time they've become much more efficient and thinner. Um, if they're on the ground, they're kind of more at an angle. Some of them actually move with the with the sun so that like on mm -hmm. like for us, we had to make sure that they were facing to be the most productive, they have to be facing south. But I mean, and on your roof, so whichever way your house is facing. But if they're freestanding, like there's some in Indiana or whatever, they those move, they're computerized. So they follow the sun. They they shift and rotate with them. So, and then they also, um, you know, both ways. So, I don't know if that helps anything of what you're saying, but. Do um, you know what your maximum kilowatt? I can look at uh, that. So I was trying to look at, I was trying not to be rude being on my uh, phone. That's what I was searching for, but I'll look at that and talk with Kent. He's the one that, you know, with the company that came out to do it. So, and they, and they replace them if there's a, a defect in them or they become less efficient, they replace them over the lifetime because that's part of your warranty. But I, I brought up to Mark and to Kurt when we were talking at that one meeting, you know, this is kind of not in our lane. I'm not staying in my lane by thinking of, if you're thinking green, you don't know where those panels go at the end. 
in some heap a pile or yeah. you know what I mean there's no recycling of yeah, them. they don't recycle <laughs> yes, it's like yeah. so I mean if you want to really forward think so I don't know, but I'll look at that would you guys do it again but we just did it we oh, just done it. I mean, they're fairly new okay. yeah we, we're early into this not even a full year we got them in the winter and they're on the barn Help this a little. Uh, we decided to do it when AES doubled, tripled our bill. So we did that. And so, what does your bill look like now? Just curiosity. I mean, it was four hundred dollars, and now we pay forty five. Oh, okay. The user, yeah. Very efficient. Yeah. yeah. Don't get credit like this. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Um, um, so things have, have focused for us a, a bit tonight, so we don't have to deal with the, the, the large, small farm facility. So, small, large farm, mm -hmm. I guess is the problem. Adjective there. So, um, so we can just focus on this stuff. I was thinking that we had to meet a deadline, yeah. you know, of six months here. And so I was thinking what we needed to have a bunch of special meetings in uh, August to try to get this done in time. We may, yeah, and talk to the-, the And we may. But we right. can also extend the moratorium if they need to give us more time. Yeah. So it sounds like they're- Yeah. We'll, yeah. They so that. so th this, is the, this is the situation. Um, our next meeting isn't until October 3rd. So- you know, the pattern has been we don't get a lot done unless we're meeting and talking and get making assignments or whatever, making commitments, what we're going to do. So we can have a special meeting in August if everybody would so choose to do so. I'm just about out for September. And and then I know we get into harvest time. You know, when does that start roughly? October. Yeah, so we want to get everything done before then, really. Are we allowed to put cut? cut? Me, school. me not really understanding how any of this works is I've not really added anything to the resolution since I've been here. Um, are we allowed to work on this? Does it have to be in a meeting setting as far as putting together the wording? No, we can work. We can work, uh, you know, in on our own or in in pairs or whatever. Because I'm just looking at their their template here, and I mean they've got the definitions right there in front of them. Right. We're ground mounted, so integrated, and rooftop. So I we feel like that's already there. Fill in the blanks, quite yeah, well. really. Yeah, because then they've got permitted uses yeah. and general requirements. And I mean, yeah, you guys might be able to pick it apart and find more that needs to be added. But I'm sitting here looking okay. at it. and I'm like, wow. Look, those are active. those are value judgments that we need to make. Yeah. You know, like, what's the what's the standoff distance for, between that and another property? What you know? How what percentage of a roof? Those are things we need to decide and yeah. and say, okay. What does the township value here? What is the property owner's rights versus the, the, the values of the community? That's what we're always trying to balance. So, so I guess to, to, to get down to a, a practical thing, do we need to have a special meeting for this to get this done? Or in you know in October or in August here? What's your feeling about this? Should we? Sounds like that deadline is not as critical as it was. Mm -hmm. Correct. But, and I'm in agreement with in the you know plug in the numbers here. But some of the lot of detail in it though that you don't need, maybe that you wouldn't need. Right. Well, no, because a lot of it has to do with um, energy systems, yeah. solar farms. Yeah. Like I said, if you just look at you know A, B, and D, yeah, alone is mm -hmm. basically what we need. And then we have, we need to add something about setbacks. Obviously. Yeah, right. And they, this one even says, you know, uh, entirely in the rear yard. I was reading them earlier. That, but, you know, sometimes that's not going to be, that's not going to work. You know, they may have to do a side yard. Take frisbees up here. It's more in the side yard than the backyard. But if where he's got it is okay. So I don't know. Well, isn't that where the BGA comes into play then? Well, we really want to have to involve them for that. For every 
from a solar thing, not really. I don't think they'll be amused by that. No. But with solar, it's hard because you don't get any sun in your backyard. Yeah, I mean, okay, but, but what you just said, you know, if we, if we say it has to be in the rear yard, then that makes it easier for the BZA. But if, if we leave it open, that makes it harder for the BZA. So we have to help them out, I, I see it. To make it make their job as easy as possible. Well, I mean, like right now, it doesn't have to go before the BCA. It doesn't have to. Yeah, that's right now. It's just an accessory yeah. structure. Rooftop. We don't have nothing to do with anything. As long as you know, it's in the backyard. So many accessory. As long as yeah. it's in the backyard, which is was what my Mike. Well, that's what this says in here, but and that's what I was why I was bringing that up is because right. sometimes that's not going to be a fit. Yeah. So I don't know if that is an inspection type thing and saying. People say, well, yeah, I'd like to put this in. That's really not going to fit my backyard. Can I do that? And maybe that's something. So do we, that, instead of making an accessory structure, do we make it its own permit? And make it its own, have its own set of rules and regulations? Kind of, instead of saying, well, instead of this being an accessory structure, an accessory building, you're getting a permit for a solar pit or a solar. And here's, and here's what you need to go by. Yeah. But you're right, an accessory building has its own set of setbacks and regulations or an accessory structure. And I understand what you're saying. But rather than keeping it as an accessory structure, do we make it its own? Instead of giving someone a permit for an accessory structure, give them a permit for solar panels. That way we're kind of starting from scratch and we're getting ready. Well, we can still use this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead, of, I'm saying start from scratch for what they have. in the existing regulations for accessory structures. Yeah, so make them if they would come in and apply for it, they're actually just applying for this, and you've got to meet the criteria okay. here instead of instead of having to have it six feet from your property line or whatever. We can make our own set of well, that's all going to be on here. Now. Yeah, yeah, but it won't be. The, it might not necessarily be the same as what an accessory structure requires. And that's something we really have to give some thought to as far as you know. If that's going to infringe on a neighbor, you know, how far does it need to go? What's it going to make, you know, good fences make good neighbors. I mean, do we good. Could use some of them. We could still use some of the accessory ones. And you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if we like it at six feet or 10 feet, we can put it in there and say it's got to be this. It needs to be. There needs to be. What I agree with you is. It doesn't necessarily have to be in your backyard, but we don't want it in front of a house either. Right. I think that's the only haste of this is that we leave Sean on a, on an island here when she has to make these decisions right now because she just has to go with what we have. That's really to me, we've got more for him for six or a year. The only haste of this is that. I think it might be yeah. like, a, can you put in there with your, like a description of like, um, uh, solar, like, Definition of the solar panel, they're most efficient if they're, I don't know, facing south or, or whatever, and they're supposed to be in the backyard. So it's kind of like a, a deterrent. They wouldn't even apply. It's, it's really not going to work for everybody. I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like it wouldn't work. So if, you, so if you have a description, they're just out because it's not. Yeah. Gonna yeah. So, they just would be limited to their roof, right. to their house roof, or their car or whatever. So. I don't know about the President of yeah, sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, but what if Sal is directly facing your neighbor and they walk out? You can't do that, no. or let that happen. <laughs> That's why I think it's it may have to be a site. Uh, visit, you know, a proposal, and you know, I think there might be more to it than what we're thinking here. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I think we, I think in some of those, though, I, I remember reading that there was talked about like the glare and the. Uh, did we read that? I think we never was that about the video. The neighbors glaring into the road. Yeah, right, but they didn't apply to us, but it was a possible situation where it could be a house right, because he's putting them on the corner there, and it could have. But it didn't, it doesn't, it worked out well, but there was nothing to keep him. And he's planted he some pine trees that are out front, you know, that is really kind of blocking. Eventually you won't even be able to see it. 
And that's what it says in here too. Um, it has visual barriers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have yeah. considered that. That requires in this in this yeah, template. It has. That's, that's, like that. that's a definite. You know, and it and it mentioned it's not just a you know an earth firm or something. It's a yeah. it's a yeah. natural vegetation mm -hmm. type thing. Some trees or whatever. Just not. We want to make sure it's not honeysuckle that's excluding oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the easiest thing. Amazing. Just naturally do nothing, and the honeysuckle will yeah. hide it. <laughs> Okay, so I'll get back to my original question. Okay. Yeah. Do we need to have any special meetings between now and October 3rd to, do, to discuss some of the things, very, what I think are very important part points that we just, just talked about that are up in the air? Why don't we wait and see what Mark finds out and do? Well, that's well, no, that's personal solar farms. Talk about residential. This is just residential. We have to do something for residential. You don't have anything residential in there. Residential. Business, industrial. I still think we need to look at industrial because it's land, right? I mean, we don't we don't say something if we don't regulate it. Then, it's water. well, now, now can we put it as a permitted use in all three, and then put requirements on it? Sure, we can do whatever we want. We just need to agree on it. So, so I was proposing uh, some dates here um, for a special meeting. Uh, July 18th, I don't know when they are, BZA meets, second Tuesday. Yeah. We're good there. Uh, July 18th, August 1st, August 15th, or August 29th. I mean, those those four days would get us. Uh, next October. Pardon me? October's next scheduled yeah. meeting. The next scheduled meeting. Right. Right. And so you probably want some time on this. I think it's perfect. It's the 18th. Weeks. August one too. Yeah, let's let's put it in August someplace and go ahead and spend and, and schedule another meeting in August at some point. Okay. August well, the Wednesdays, the Wednesdays are the first, the fifteenth. Excuse me, Tuesdays. What's that say? Yeah, don't do that. The first, yeah, the first, the fifteenth, and the 29th. Yeah. How's that mess with your school there? Yeah, wonder. Well, they're in the evening, so it doesn't. I just, okay. I just, I don't know when, um, say, meet the teacher night is, so that goes into the evening. Yeah. I, I when do you guys go back? Yeah, it's the 15th, so do you? 15th, so to speak. Yeah, I, I just look 15th. At There's three of us. Okay. She's looking, she's looking okay. at when she goes back to school. Okay. In summer, I'm kind of in denial. I, I'm a student right now, so I'm not a teacher. You know, when you even when you retire, you still have those school dreams and stuff. Being <laughs> like the school. Parents. <laughs> Hazel was making me clean out my closet, my on my school, my button up, all my button up shirts. She said, "You got to get rid of all these." I'm like, okay, six. So I, I pulled out sixty-seven button up shirts. Yeah. Holy! Cow. This was in your dream? No, no, this was in. No, we don't. This is for real. I don't think I was. Period. Well, so then I had then I had the school dream that night, but it was like sixty-seven, and I was like, I was I'm like getting rid of my whatever my your history. My history. Your it was yeah. like empty. Really, I mean, it was a lot of a lot of pretty shirts. And that's, and I wouldn't even, that's not just a fourth of them. Yeah, we got for every Christmas and Father's Day. I had, oh my God, I had so many, so many shirts. But she wanted to get quilts out of them, so. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's kind of hurt even. 16, he said. Always with you. Okay, yeah. I have professional about the, it's just during the day. 15, Kurt. For the 15. Okay, 15. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with the fifteenth, and we if we still need to do some more, we'll decide that. Okay. So, are we just looking at our solar that day? Residential solar. Okay. Yeah, that's a special meeting for solar. To decide regulations for uh, zoning districts on the county. So, do you write down the notes and write those down ahead of time and come in and share them, or? Yeah, yeah. What I would ask everybody to do is to uh, where's the uh, 
and we'll plug in some numbers there. Yeah, yeah. And, and then we'll see what we all come up with. That's on yeah, take an average. I think so. <laughs> Are you talking about on the tell? Oh, yeah. You know, I put, I did, or I did some of that. You know, twenty feet sounded like you know a good. Well, I think some of that we can get from our zoning, the zoning book for setbacks for other things. Yeah. 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 When we can kind of, that's what I was thinking about doing. Yeah. Looking up some of the, you know, if you're going to build a, you know, other structure or something, what's the What's the setback for the neighbor? And but I think some of those numbers we can kind of pull off of here. Yeah. Or they okay. can be all new numbers. No? Yeah. Let's let's all do that between now and then. Let's take each of us. Everybody has that printout of that uh, that template. Oh, yeah. 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 It says template on. Yeah. 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 We'll take the template. And this is a really great guy. Yeah, yeah. like uh, yeah, all this one. Put up each page. Can you give me two of them? Yeah. Because I printed one out and then Mark also printed one out. That's what was throwing me off. I didn't see Mark this is not a template. Mark is uh, it's behind this page. Yeah. Okay, so this is my template. It didn't say template. That's why I'm so cool. Okay. What? Any other new business? There it is. All right, we're good. I got Any it. other new business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? <laughs> I'll second. All right. Do all in favor. Um, 8 41 p.m. Oh my gosh. Holy cow. <laughs> you have that or not? I don't know. I haven't found it yet. It doesn't have to say template on it. Just the information regarding the state's local regulations is provided. Page two, sir. It looks like yours. 